All right, question of the day. What is your favorite non-traditional style or narrative style game in which you're playing a story? Maybe it's, you know, heck, the old days, choose your own adventure books. Maybe you're uh, playing Mansions of Madness or something like that. But let me know in the comments below what your favorite narrative game is that really uses different mechanics than traditional, hey, you do this on your turn, you do this on my turn. You could count Chronicles of Crime and all of those games in there as well. But let me know what yours is because today we're talking about Mother of Frankenstein Volume 1 and Volume 2. We'll get to number 3 later and you'll see why. Volume 3's box is bigger and there's something a little more involved in there. Now again, the components themselves are not spoilers, but I'm not going to be able to show you really anything except the back of the boxes, essentially. But I will give you some spoiler-free thoughts, and at the very end of the video, I'll give you some spoiler thoughts. Uh, but the spoiler thoughts are actually going to be light. Like You're going to be able to watch 99% of this video. You know what? Uh, you know, I'll tell you what, we'll save the spoiler thoughts to the end of Volume Three's review, which is another video. So no spoilers on this review at all. Uh, make sure to watch and let me know what you think if you played Mother of Frankenstein. Now, let's get to the review. Hey, before we dive in, make sure to check out the Board Game Breakfast mugs over at Dicetowerstore.com. They are almost sold out with the new pre-order that we're doing, so make sure to get yours in. And we will also have some at Dice Tower East, as well as all the Dice Tower merch there. Looking forward to seeing you there. Let's take a look at Mother Frankenstein. So that's really all I can show you. Now again, Volume 1. Let's break it down. Volume 1, Volume 2. Now, when it comes to difficulty in games, I don't like to feel stupid. <laughs> Not to toot my own horn here. Fairly intelligent human being. Uh, I play a bit of a character when I'm on camera at the Dice Tower, but I'm actually pretty dang smart, pretty dang intuitive, and able to infer things from games that say, hey, I bet that's what it's talking about. And then lo and behold, that's what it's talking about. So, Volume 1 is a mixed bag. One of these, I opened it up and I was like, all right, James, you're going to have to start working on this, and we'll kind of work on it together. That would be the um, astronomy one. The second one I opened was music, and I was like, nope, not going to be able to do this. Not because I don't like music, not because I don't understand music theory. It's more so that I was just unsure of what it was asking. Now, granted, I probably could have taken the first hint and be like, oh, okay, I got it. This is where it wants us to go, which is what we started doing later. The other one, though, the poetry one, this was really cool. This is when you started to infer things. You were like, oh, wait a minute, I'll bet it means this. You know, or, oh, oh, here, it's talking about this. This is the word it means from this. The poetry one was my favorite of the three. Now, once I saw how James was doing the astronomy one and he was solving that, we were working on this, I was like, oh, that's really, really stinking cool too. The music one, I'm still not sure about. Uh, pretty much forced my way through it because I was like, I just want to get to the main puzzle. Now, the main puzzle is that picture you see on the back of the box, the three rings, right? And what's cool is you're going to have to assemble and slide the rings and rotate them around kind of like a Zelda um, Resident Evil type puzzle in a way that makes sense. And then you're going to do what the first letter tells you to do with that. And then hopefully you're going to get an answer. And then once you finish that, you'll move on to box two. Now, as far as that goes, let's break this down. Box one, the puzzles are very difficult, but they're rewarding when you get them. Right? When you finally go, oh, this is right. What I'm doing is working. That's a lot of fun. Number two, let's go into that, volume two. This one threw me for a little bit because we compartmentalize our hobby activities. Number one is every Christmas we will do a jigsaw puzzle, thousand piece, most likely a Disney jigsaw puzzle, or over there, you can't see it, it's right off frame. This year we did the Dice Tower puzzle. Um, and then over there's Mickey, got an Indiana Jones, right? That's our Christmas activity. We don't do that during the normal year. Gaming is not puzzling to us. So when you open this up and it's like, hey, guess what? Part one, do this jigsaw puzzle. We're like, what? I, I was not prepared for a jigsaw puzzle to be part of this. So we naturally built the jigsaw puzzle because you can't cheat that one. There's not even any hints. I mean, you know what you're doing. You have the picture to go off of, but it's a jigsaw puzzle and you got to solve the jigsaw puzzle. And it's a little difficult, but... Once you get that built, you start with the puzzles. Now, these puzzles were a blast. The ball puzzle was really, 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 really fun. Finding out, okay, all the things you need to know based on reading these clues and inferring and be like, oh, I bet that means this, so much fun. Then number three was the research journal. The first several puzzles in it were great, and then it started to get repetitive to the point where the very last one of the research journal puzzle, we were like, nope, skip, don't wanna do it. Not because it's not good, it's because it was way, the difficulty ramped up way more, but 
it's a cool puzzle. Like what you're doing is really cool. And when it works, it's great. It's overwhelming at first. So of volume one and volume two, I like volume two way better than volume one, even though the ending of volume one was really fun. And to me, more fun than volume. I take that back because what you reveal in volume two is pretty stinking cool. And I've never seen anything do this before. So volume two to me is still better than volume one. However, I recommend playing them in order because you are telling the story. And I told myself at the beginning, I don't really care. This lady's got some crazy family history going on. There's a whole lot of weird <laughs> dynamics between her and her paramour and his other paramour. And they're going to this ball and she gets mad. And it, it's weird, right? And then they start talking about, well, you know, how Frankenstein came about reanimating corpses and things. So it's a trippy tale. And at first I was like, I don't really care. And now I was like, I got to know what happens in this story, right? So it did actually slowly draw me in. So I recommend doing them one, two, three. Do not feel shame in this game for using the hints. I absolutely recommend the hints in this one. Now, that that's not an indictment of your intelligence or mine. These are very difficult puzzles, and they have to. you cannot force your way through them. There's no brute force of, well, let's just keep trying, right? except the puzzle. You can't do that. You have to know exactly what it's saying, because the end puzzle, what it's wanting you to do, is very specific to having everything be exactly right. So I will say that, just be ready. It says four to six hours for each box. Absolutely true, take that time, take a break, walk away. Do it in another gaming session, write down notes, all that sort of stuff. But it's definitely rewarding. I did not know how I'd feel about this game at first. I still like um, the one I just reviewed better, um, Suspects, I like that one better. Still like the original Time Stories better, but this one felt like the original Time Stories in a way that few games can capture. You have no, hey, keep rolling, keep turning over cards, keep doing this. No, there's none of that. It's use your brain, figure out this information. And that to me is the most fun type of puzzle game is use your brain, infer, and get it right. And when you get it right, you go, oh, dang, I can't believe that worked. There's few things more rewarding in board gaming than, or gaming than that to me. So... Do I recommend these games? 100%. If you'd asked me before I opened the box or when I opened the boxes, I'd have said no. But now that I've played through them and played the stories and puzzles, big fan. You know, we're going to do volume three in a different video because it's, it's a bigger box and what you open it up to is much larger and I haven't finished it yet. So go get volume one. Heck, go get volume one and volume two if you can find them together and just play them. They're, they're really exciting, really a lot of fun. Um, and they're historical-ish, you know, and all that stuff. And so it's it's a lot of fun and a lot of interesting stuff going on, but really, really more rewarding. It's it's a game that my opinion grew on as we played it, as opposed to, I know I'm going to like this before we play, play it. Yep, I was right. Or I know I'm not going to like this. Yep, I was right. This one was at the beginning. I don't think we're going to like this. And then at the end, we're like, dang, that was really cool. So highly recommend volume one, volume two. I'm Brian Drake here on the Dice Tower. Make sure to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, etc. at Dice Tower Brian. Until next time. We'll see you.